Hello everyone, Thaddeus here. Driving up to take care of a job. Figured I'd make a video. So, tis the season. Why do I say tis the season? Because it is currently the season of what is pretty much the only holiday that witnesses celebrate or commemorate or take notice of. And I say holiday to help people understand because that's not the way a witness would refer to it. But tis memorial season. So memorial season is when J-dubs get together and commemorate in their way the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now memorial is a big deal for witnesses, although for most of the rank and file in their own doctrine there's no reason for it to be such a big deal for them. But it's the big event. Um, probably the only other event that is comparable, but in witness world still not as important, is uh, the district convention. So, the memorial. Now, in most religions that are based on Christianity, as I don't view Christianity to be a religion, but a way of life, in most religions, so Catholicism, Protestantism, and all the deviations thereof, Orthodox, members do communion. So you take the juice or the wine and the biscuit or the cracker, what have you, as part of the body of Christ. Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. Well, that's most religions centered on Christianity. J-dubs are a little different. If you're a J-dub, you know the whole story. You've been to as many memorials as years you've spent in the society. But for those who aren't J-dubs, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a class system. And they, I think it's John 10, 16... I'm going to have references in the description below to the stuff that I say, but I'm driving right now, so I can't double check. Uh, Jesus says that I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Now, much like how pretty much every other religion understood some of the passages in Romans 13 to be applied to the superior authorities, meaning the kings of the earth, or at least that's how they interpreted it and applied it, and the witnesses at one time, prior to Nor, only applied the superior authorities to their God Jehovah and to Jesus Christ, their version of Jesus Christ. Witnesses have an entirely different interpretation of John 10.16. That interpretation being that there are two classes of Christian, two groups. One having a hope for an earthly paradise and the 144,000 having a heavenly hope. Now, what most JWs might not either be fully cognizant of or aware of in one fashion or another is that the 144,000 are the only ones, according to Watchtower Doctrine, in the covenant of Jesus Christ. That is why they are the ones that partake um, and that they are the only ones that are going to be sons of God, or children of God, unlike most rank-and-file Jehovah's Witnesses. And a lot of Witnesses are not aware that Watchtower still teaches that Jesus is not the mediator for all mankind, but is only the mediator for the 144,000. So, the great crowd in Witness World of other sheep is not the Gentiles, as most religions based on Christianity or even secular scholars would understand Jesus to be saying in the context of that passage of John. He was referring to the people of the nations as he was sent to the Jewish people first. And the great crowd is before the Holy of Holies in heaven, before the throne in heaven. 
standing there with palm branches in their hands, and there's three whole verses that mention the 144,000. They are an extremely obscure group, and it's extremely unclear precisely what they are in the Bible. And if you try to support the Watchtower Doctrine around the great crowd and the other sheep and the 144,000, you can't just from the Bible. Um, many of the reference scriptures that a witness might refer to, probably without even bothering to read it, assuming the Watchtower has already done their due diligence, which they have not, because I decided to go in and do it, and found I could not support this doctrine from the Bible alone, without using publications, that, hang on, all right, so their understanding is whacked, and there is no other religion that I'm aware of on the planet that has this class system understanding when it comes to uh, Christianity in the same way that Watchtower does. And, you know, when you're taking a left, it's very courteous to the people behind you to give proper notice with your blinker and to make sure that you get over so that traffic can get around you. A lot of people that are turning left, for some reason, they swing wide to the right, and I, I don't understand it. Uh, anyways, back to the topic at hand. Why do witnesses even bother celebrating the memorial. Because Watchtower teaches that the great crowd can only be friends of God. You are good-for-nothing slaves doing what you want, and you have only the governing body or the faithful and discreet slave as your mediator at this time in their doctrine. That they are the way through to Jesus Christ, who is the way to the Father. So they've inserted themselves in place of Jesus as mediator for you, if you are one of the great crowd. And what's interesting is that the number of partakers, if you look at the grand totals at jw.org, might be eye-opening, which is why they even came up with a part saying that those who are partakers now could be considered mentally ill or mistaken. And how, how do you know you're anointed? Well, you just know. Okay, so if you just know, don't you just know? That was the way it was explained to me, and I never entirely understood it, but that there would be no doubt if you were anointed or not. So it's not up to anyone to judge, but if you do partake, you will be judged. Uh, not only do I have first-hand knowledge of this with regards to the only uh, anointed brother that I had close association with, where he was uh, severely judged and criticized by the then presiding overseer, of the congregation. But anybody who partakes now will be viewed with suspicion and criticism. Or I shouldn't say anybody, but in most circumstances, that's what's going to happen now. And for witnesses and their doctrine, I'd be mighty careful about that because in your own doctrine, these anointed are going to be, you know, the brothers of Christ, right? And your salvation, according to Watchtower, is reliant upon your faithful obedience and subservience to these brothers of Christ, so I'd be careful about judging anybody who partakes. Well, for me, the earliest memorial I remember, I, I gotta say, I was probably around three years old, three, four, somewhere around there, I think three, because we were still going to a hall that split off, and the hall was sold. So I'm trying to remember in the timeline, but I remember the passing of the crackers and the wine and, you know, being told not to partake of it. But for most of my youth, whenever the plate and the wine passed, I felt very strange. And I always was interested in partaking. And I never did as a witness, and I felt guilty about it. But... As soon as I was able to tear apart Watchtower's doctrine around their two classes and learn that all those who profess to be Christians are supposed to partake, uh, I did my own ceremony. 
Uh, my last two memorials, of course, were under the lockdown. And to me, okay, here's something, point of interest about the society. They can be very particular about certain details. So the wine, it was always a big ruckus about, oh, what kind of wine can we use? It has to be a very certain kind of wine uh, that would have been available in Jesus' day, but they want to replicate it perfectly, you know, with legalism, tradition, letter of the law, that stuff. But how do we know that Watchtower is capable of thorough research? It's in their own material. It's in their interpretation of Jonah, their Jonah film that was released a number of years ago at the district convention. What was it, like 2018, 2017, 2019? I don't remember. But their film about Jonah, when he pays for his passage on the ship to Tarshish, they show him using weights of silver, and the guy that he's negotiating with has his own measurements and counterweights, and they work out how much his passage is going to be. Well, what's the big deal about that? Well, a shekel is a weight of silver. It wasn't a coin. It, became, it could be a coin, but it was specifically a weight of silver. Um, the weight varied depending on whose measurements you used over the years, but it was between 9 and 12 grams or so. Rounding up, rounding down, let's say 10 grams. So, exchange was done in weights and measurements. Standardized coinage would not be invented and popularized in that area until the Lydians did it some decades after the approximate time that Jonah, that the events of Jonah were supposed to take place historically. So they're capable of being very thorough, detailed, and accurate because they got the fact that standardized coinage, uh, standardized weights of purities with symbols on them had not circulated to his area in his time. So if they can be so detailed and oriented when it comes to coinage and the kind of wine, it kind of takes away the excuse that they have when they're so incredibly inaccurate in other areas, like their interpretation of the other sheep. Because we know that they can be very accurate to me. So, yeah, the memorial. <clears throat> Will I be attending the memorial this year? I'm not planning on it. April 4th. Um, I already do communion. So sometimes I attend the Bereans meeting where they do communion. Uh, I think it's the first uh, weekend of the month, if I remember correctly, but I also do it on my own uh, because Jesus did not give any direction about how often one was to take communion or not, just as often as you do it. It's a reinforcement or renewal of the covenant. Um, when I feel the need, it was interesting when I was down in Texas at that um, uh, event movement, which is very much like an assembly, um, they were passing out little uh, communion emblems. I think it was juice and a cracker and stuff in these little prepackaged containers. And it was just so funny to me how different my worldview now is as a witness that could have been considered so offensive and stuff. And it was it's just standard Christian practice. I thought, but we took communion that weekend. And the Watchtower Society, if you're a Christian, if you still want to be a Christian, and you're a JW, or you're coming out of being a JW, you have to understand that the Watchtower Society is stealing your inheritance from you with their theology. It is you are supposed to be a son of God under the covenant of Jesus Christ, upon whom the wrath of God was poured out uh, on Calvary, on the cross, uh, meaning that the weight of all the sins, the transgressions, and the iniquity of mankind and the creation was poured out upon Jesus, upon Yeshua, Hamashiach, when he was crucified. That is the burden that he bore more than all the injury and the wounds that was taken to his flesh. It was the he was crushed and broken in his spirit. To help redeem mankind as the sons of God through which the creation itself can be redeemed. 
and that that <clears throat> incredible revision, that blessing, that hope is what has been stolen by the Watchtower from JWs. And instead, their memorial involves rejecting that sacrifice, the blood and the body of Christ. Or you just pass it, and that's why I call it a satanic ritual, because you are rejecting that covenant under the guise of honoring it as friends of God, when Christians or the body of Christ are never called friends of God. They're called children of God or sons of God, redeemed as members of that body of Christ, brothers of Christ and sons to Christ God and Father. So, you know, that's why I didn't attend last year, and I don't intend on going this year. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm mulling over it because I know I wouldn't be counted, but I would be partaking if I was there. And although with the incident that happened in Germany, I can't even say for sure that they'd be letting anybody in because I'm sure that the elders have been given a letter by now that'll be leaked at some point about me you all know, being weary of four members and all that. But no, that's why I wouldn't attend. It's not because I disrespect Jesus Christ or his sacrifice, but because I respect it and I acknowledge that it was for me and for mankind. So, yeah, I'm coming up on my stop, so that's what I wanted to talk about today in regards to the memorial, what it is, what it isn't, why I'm not interested in celebrating it. I hope you're all having a good day and that you have a good night.